I lost my business and everything that I've built and worked for for the last 15 years during COVID. My whole income, my household income, my kids' food, everything. Here's the story. Hi, my name's Fletch. I make videos and content about my dream Bali life that I live with my two children and my um, partner. Um, it was a dream that we had when we were at rock bottom and we didn't have anything. Um, but it was a passion and something that we knew that would happen for us. The content I make is how we got there, our Bali life at the moment and the adventures that we're up to. So I had a business that I set up in, in uni. Um, so it would be like 15, 20 years ago now. And that business became my life, my everything, my family's income. Um, blood, sweat and tears went into the business. As anyone will probably know who's had the business, it, there were ups and there were downs, um, but it was my everything. It was our everything. I juggled that business with um, family life, a young growing family life, um, having two children and navigating um, depression, which I'd had since being very, very young and functioned with it and lived with it, worked within the boundaries of depression. Um, when I was well, I crammed work in. When I wasn't well, everything stopped and crashed and you know, that was the cycle that I was living in. So I was definitely running on empty fumes. There was nothing left in the tank. Um, we were burnt out as a family but that was life that was the way it was we were very busy but we were earning we weren't rich we weren't earning lots but it was our whole family income and when covid hit we lost the business overnight so the business was an events company um, and obviously covid hit the world was upside down nobody knew what was happening um, and the business was an events company um, all events stopped all events were cancelled um, and pretty much overnight we saw our income drop to zero. Not only that, we had uh, existing clients and, and customers that needed their money back. They were in a similar position to us. They didn't know what was happening. They needed the refunds. If they couldn't get married um, and have their event, they needed that money back. So we were struggling to pay people back and making sure they were paid back. Um, but the whole time was just a complete upside down, topsy-turvy time as it was for everybody. Especially with kids, we just wanted to be safe and didn't understand what was going on with COVID at the time or what the agenda was back then. We just felt the fear on the news, stayed home, had no income coming in, but we were okay, we were healthy um, and that was all that mattered. And as time went on, we had no money coming into the house. So we spent all of our savings um, over the year that we had. I still really struggle to talk about this to this day. Um, friends and family don't know this story. Um, just purely because we got our heads down, we didn't want to moan about our situation. We didn't want to tell people. And we also didn't know what the hell we were going to do. We had to come up with a plan. Um, and when this happens, with me inside, we just get our heads down and knuckle down. So we didn't really tell anybody the true scope of the situation. Um, and we were also a little bit embarrassed that this had happened to us. We were always so comfortable and not rich, but comfortable. We were self-starters. We didn't rely on a job or it, we always did things for ourselves and we provided for ourselves. And we worked such long hours to make it happen, but we made it happen and we lived a nice life. And then this stopped and we had nothing. We had no money left in the savings account. We had debts up to our eyeballs that we still haven't told people about, but the debts just came from living. We had to pay for our living costs. So we lost the business and we lost our savings through living, but we were healthy and we were okay, but we had no way of earning any money. And I was living with depression. And when in, when you live with depression, you it's completely exhausting. You cannot live for a sustained amount of time in the fog 
and the black cloud and the black dog as I describe it for a long time because the body just cannot do that. So we sold some stuff, things, I sold his watches, he had a couple of watches that he'd built up over the years and you know saved for to get, he sold them, he sold his decks, he's a DJ so he had music equipment that was um, So, sorry. It's still quite raw to talk about because it was so traumatic and I think we are just getting over it. So Sai sold some music equipment and I kept us going for a few months and but well, we had no business, no income. At the same time we had stocks and shares and crypto that we'd invested in. Um, so we always use a portion of our income and put it to one side for a rainy day, invest, uh, the sensible thing. But at the time, everything tanked. So if we were to sell this stuff, it would be sold at a loss and a huge, huge loss because everything had tanked to virtually nothing. So we had exhausted our savings and had no investments to speak of. We did have a property. Um, that we bought at auction to do up. See, me and Sai always have many pots, many ways of spinning lots of plates um, because we understand that if one of those plates falls and crashes, you have others spinning that are okay. And that's kind of how we work as a couple that earn from being self-employed or work now online. You have to have many different things to make the whole work or to protect yourself from and keep your house. So we were able to finish the house, but we had to sell that for, not for a loss, but not for the profit that we should have got, but because we needed the money desperately, we had to sell at one of those places that give you a really rubbish price, but they, they buy it instantly. So we had that, so we had that pot of money that we could at least live on and not absolutely drown. It was during this time that we kind of realized that we needed to look at ways of either getting a job and um, jobs weren't easy to come by at that time because the whole world was in lockdown um, so I did apply for a few drive delivery driving jobs for Ocado, Tesco, supermarket places um, but because the volume was so high we'd never heard anything back from stuff like that. So we found ourselves age just nearly 40 with two kids and no, no business, no job, unemployed and feeling unemployable, like we couldn't even get jobs at a supermarket. Life back then honestly felt so dire, so futile, and so what is the point? If we've spent 15 years building something up that was the hardest thing of our whole lives, we didn't have it in us to do that again. Um, it was impossible to do that again. It just felt so pointless. I was living with mental health, which was not doing too great at that time. We were locked in. We were world schooling the kids, like so many other people. And we knew we had to find other ways of earning and other ways to secure our family's uh, well-being. We also didn't know when this was gonna end. We didn't know when lockdowns were gonna end. Um, when could we get back out? So we were in a position that a lot of people found themselves in. Um, I had an old business that I'd started up in uni that was a greetings card company um, that I was able to open up and start again from scratch. So I'm this 40 year old woman starting a business that I did when I was 20 um, that after my first month made 60 pound. 60 pound, I'll put some conversions up. It wasn't enough. So in that time, we had no money, we couldn't afford sanitary products, we couldn't afford toothpaste, we couldn't afford food. We were eating very, very basic food. Um, things were not looking good. And we couldn't see a way of changing that for the foreseeable. But the card making business um, saved us. It wasn't a fast journey. The second month, I think we did 200 pound. The third month, it was very starting a business from the very beginning. Um, but over time, it grew to become something, a food budget, some a shopping paid for. Um, and it was very much in the early days of that, just one step, one step, 
at a time, surviving, just keeping, just keeping the heads above water and not ending it all. And it was during this time of total hitting rock bottom of our whole lives, and I've had quite a few rock bottoms, that I was at my lowest point and we had some money left. It was £6,000 that we had left that we should have kept really to use for food, rent, all the things that we were just in debt with. But I used that money and I booked a holiday. And this holiday was going to be the last holiday that I would take. Holidays for us as a family are where we're at our happiest. And it's not because we're lazy, we're on holiday. It's because we connect to nature, our feet earth in the ground. We mostly walk there for, we have the sun on our skin. And it's all of these things of a holiday that mean we're at our happiest as a family. And this is why I used the last bit of our money to book us this holiday. And it was to Mexico. And it was when the world had opened up again and people were able to start getting out of the country and not doing things like that. And I knew that I needed to book this holiday despite it costing us a fortune and us not having the money at all in any way to do it. I just knew something in me. I just knew that I had to, I had to do it. And this is where the magic began. And this is also where the story takes a very dark. So that holiday for us was gonna be my time to give the kids a lasting memory of me where where it wasn't the doom and gloom of the last two years that we'd had because the kids had picked up on that obviously they'd been at home they'd lost their whole way of life through being at home and not in school with their friends and they picked up on bad stuff happening at home and not being able to do stuff buy stuff have stuff pay stuff and um, we had people knocking at the door um to collect money and things like that so they, they'd seen that so this holiday was going to be a time for them to remember us as a family being happy. And it was also going to be my last time with them because I had decided that I couldn't carry on living in that way. and I had decided to end my life. Sorry, this is still very raw to talk about. Um, I'm only 1.5 years on from that point, or two years, and things have dramatically changed for me that I want to let people know that if you're feeling like that, there is another way. But when you're living with mental health and you're in the thick of a depression, the last thing you're thinking of is a magical universe that you can tap into at any point. Because when you're feeling like that, it is an impossibility for you at that time. Or so you think. And so we were in Mexico and we had a beautiful time and I had really gone within on that holiday and I'd been having Reiki where I was meditating and connecting and, and really trying to make sense of a very messed, messy mind. And so I was in Mexico and I asked, I prayed. I'm not religious. I used to see God, the image of God as the things I was taught in school so I didn't pray, I didn't believe that praying worked. And, but when you're at your lowest, you are guided, I guess, to some other way. And that's where I was in Mexico. I prayed, or I, as I like to call it now, to have a problem, real problem with saying God somehow. I prayed, I spoke to the universe, I asked, for a sign 
I asked my guardians, my angels, God, the universe, divine power, whoever was listening to give me a sign. Give me a sign that they were listening. Give me a sign that what I was thinking of doing was the right thing to do. Now I knew I couldn't carry on living the life I was living. It wasn't humanly possible for me to get through depression. I couldn't carry on. And I'd always wanted to live abroad overseas in the sun because that is where I get my energy from. My vibration is healthy and happy when I'm in the sun. And so always thinking I need to be somewhere where I have access to this life this energy, this food. And I've been having Reiki and having sensations of absolute pure love where I was being held and something spoke to me that was my voice and said, the answers are in you, you need to go within. And Bali was mentioned. At the time, none of that made sense and I thought I was going mad, but I couldn't escape the feeling that I got from that and I knew that it couldn't be ignored. So when I asked the, the universe for a sign, I was asking, is this the right thing? Is I'm thinking of moving my whole family to Bali. I'm in debt, I'm depressed. On one hand, I'm thinking of killing myself. Am I going mad? like give me a sign just give me anything in nature that I will see and I will know is a sign and the next day we got a sign I got a sign and that night I'll go into more detail in another video probably about the signs and what led us to Bali and why we're even here um, but that sign I took and I just knew I knew what it was and I said, thank you. And then, but, but I thought, am I, is this crazy? Am I losing my mind like here? So that night I prayed again and I asked, I told the universe that I think the sign that I got was a sign, but can you tell me if it was the sign? Give me something more refined, more perfect, more absolute. And that was it, left it, knew that I would get answered. And then the next day, I got my second sign. And by that point, I told Sai and the kids about what had happened. And they were jumping for joy saying, oh my God, the universe has really spoke to you, mommy. And because it was very clear, Sai. as they were on board with this new situation, this new way of life, this new, we're gonna go to Bali, um, we're gonna do it. This holiday has cemented that decision for us and we're gonna do it based on receiving a sign from the universe and against all odds no money no job absolutely in debt depressed to the point where i can't go on against all odds all of those odds we're in bali now living our best life and this was only max two years ago now and so the lessons i learned from losing everything from loss was to go within and close my eyes, close your eyes and listen to what is being said. The loss that I had to get to and the experience that I had to go through, it took that much for me to know this knowledge. And I don't want anyone going through that and not knowing the knowledge of going within, closing your eyes, meditating, listening, tuning in to what the world is there. My loss was a complete gift. It opened me up to a new way of life, a new way of doing things, a dream life, an abundant life. I had to put the work in but it was all there for me to have. And now you're on this YouTube channel, hopefully watching this video, seeing my Bali life happen.
I'm probably thinking, how has she, she got there? And I'm still finding my feet with this whole awakening journey, this spiritual awakening that I'm on. And I want to share so much on that, on the things we did in the early days, because it wasn't as simple as just getting here. We did a lot of things beforehand that meant that we could tune in and tap into this energy, this frequency that was all around us um, and completely change our whole life, our family's life, everything. And I want that for other people. This is the most personal thing I've ever spoke to on camera about. I haven't even spoke to friends about this kind of stuff because how do you even bring it up? Like, oh, by the way, like, so yeah, thanks for sticking to this point if you have. And um, this has been really cathartic and helpful for me to speak through because I haven't spoke about this kind of stuff and I didn't realize how it was still affecting me. And I hope now that I really thought I'd got over that situation in our lives because obviously now life is great but I just want to kind of use this video as a, to close the chapter and close the book and wrap it up and let it go so thank you and on future videos I want to go into the ins and outs of how I manifest things how I've always been able to manifest how having depression blocked me from manifesting, the things I need to do to stay mentally clear and healthy so that I can manifest more. And I want to share those things with people because they are life-changing. And if I can go from the pits of depression to wanting to, well, not wanting to, to planning the end to stop anyone else from feeling that way to know that there are other ways and there is another dimension of life that exists for you and for everybody we just need to step into it and so lots of my videos going forward are going to be all about the universe um, how to manifest how to clear energy how to work with vibration the law of assumption the law of attraction I mean there's just so much um, if you head over to my blog, I've been writing about this stuff for a long time because it was a lot easier to write about it than to speak on camera. I still wasn't comfortable with this truth and this new life that I was leading. I was still confused by it. I knew it was working and I knew it worked, but I was very confused as to how it would be taken and would people think I'm crazy? And I'm only now discovering that there's a whole tribe of us this kind of person around that knows this stuff and I'm seeing a lot of it out there and they're my people and that's kind of what I came to Bali for to connect with that kind of person to connect with the energy ley lines of, of Bali and the earth and to explore this side of me that has always been there I have always had this magical side of me that got so blocked with trauma childhood problems not a great start in life that took a long time for me to, to get past and move past but once I got past it I was able to tap into the extraordinary magical abilities that we all have and um, we just forgot how to use them so my videos yeah going forward are going to be um, a lot more about that not always it's going to still be about Bali life but it's going to be about empowering mums to get unstuck whether that's financially through earning online in the various different ways that we do or mentally to not be a slave to this matrix holographic life that we are living and we don't know we don't realize that we are and um, so yeah that's it for me for today thank you